I know a lot of people will go one at a time and like kick drum and you're hitting the kick drum for like five minutes and EQing it and I don't, I don't know what you're doing because I don't think it should take that long to get a kick drum sound. But, <laughs> uh, and if it does take that long, don't waste five minutes on the kick drum because I mean, if you do that for every single drum, you won't have time, you'll never have time to hear your vocal, which is the most important part of the mix. I'll just turn it up and make sure it sounds halfway decent. I'll kind of tweak on it, but if somebody else is playing, I'll move to that, make sure that's halfway decent. Make sure I hear everything, everything's working. It, when I have time, I'll go back and kind of keep tweaking on things and trying to get a good mix. And, and I also won't spend five minutes on a kick drum because by itself it may sound amazing, but then when the whole band is playing it, it's not always going to work. So I, I want to get the full mix. I like get everything kind of halfway and then have the band play a song. And when they're playing a song is when I'm really working on the mix. Because when you're building a mix, you're building a mix. You're not, it's not one instrument at a time. It's the whole thing at once. So you want to make sure that's working. And they may play a song and it may sound great. And if you stop and somebody hits one drum or plays, plays one instrument, it may not sound that great by itself. And sometimes you have to just forget about that, like especially in an empty room. An empty room sounds awful every time. Sometimes you'll hear one thing that you hate, and so that's all you hear, and you focus on it. And you have to be able to step back and try to look at the whole picture. It's like, oh, you know what? That maybe that's not that bad. What's worse is I can't hear the vocal. <laughs> There's something you've said before that um, maybe you can speak into a little bit uh, about not going crazy on EQ. Like that was you and I have laughed a couple times about how how much easier it is to actually get good tone out of stuff than a lot of people make it. I'm kind of a minimalist a little bit with mixing. Like I'll try to leave everything as flat as I can. Like I'll definitely start with everything flat, no compression, no gates, no EQ, especially with the guitars. Let's talk about that because guitars don't need EQ most of the time. It should sound pretty good flat. And if you're going in and just doing a bunch of crazy EQ on a guitar, what you're doing you're just fixing it at the wrong place. You need to fix it at the amp first. And that's, you need to have a relationship with your guitar player to be able to do that. You go talk to him like, hey, can we, can we change this? What do you think about this? Or, or move the mic over. Mic placement on a guitar amp is pretty incredible how, how different it sounds when you move the mic an inch or two. Do you guys have and, a like starting place that you start with? Yeah, we have a go-to you know, spot on the amp that we like and then, I'll move it or he moves it, and sometimes we do it without the other person knowing. It's kind of a little game we play. But, <laughs> uh, we're so cute together. That's the but, uh, <laughs> darker, bright fight. If this is the speaker and the center's right here, we mic um, towards the edge, probably an uh, inch, inch or two back from the edge. Uh, we put both mics in the same spot on both amps. For a while we were doing like one bright mic and one dark mic, but um, we decided to just mic the good part of the speaker on both amps because that makes sense, right? Mic the good stuff. So a lot of times if there's a problem with the guitar tone, it is mic placement because I typically set up an amp the same way every time. And we use um, Shure SM57s, just two of them, $100 mics. And if you're standing in front of the guitar amp and it sounds great, but you don't like what you're hearing in the sound system, then it's definitely the, the mic and or the mic placement. To really hear what, what the mic placement is doing is just get some in-ears if you have them and just solo up that guitar mic and just stand there while somebody's playing and just, just slowly move it across the speaker and you can, you can hear what it does. And just doing that, if you've never done that, that will teach you a lot about how to get a good sounding guitar. Just putting in in-ears and moving the mic, you'll, you'll learn so much from doing that once or twice. Number one thing I think you need to do is walk around the room a little bit if you stand here and try to make the most amazing mix you've ever heard in your life, it might be the, the worst mix you've ever heard, just 10 feet over. The way to fix that is to make this a little bit worse where you're standing, which is not fun. I'll stand here and the, and the bass will be like 10 times too loud, but it's perfect for 90% of the room, so you just have to live with that and it's not very fun, but, but it's good to know what, what it sounds like in every seat. That's great. It's something I've seen a lot is people say, hey, my voice sounds really uh, boomy. Can you add some high end? And that instinctively sounds right because you're like, I need to hear it more crisp. But in actuality, probably maybe what that mic needed was to remove some of the low end or remove some of the low mids. 
to think through the idea of what is there too much of and remove that, you'll, uh, you'll clean up your mix a lot. And instead of using terms like, uh, if you want to up your game in communication, saying stuff like that, like, can you cut some of the lows? Uh, and it's pretty easy to work with, a, especially a keyboardist or sound guy, and go through and say, what's low end sound like? What's low mid sound like? What's mid range sound like? What's high mid sound like? Because there's actually a thing that goes along with each of those. You're going to get a lot better result, both of you, if you say something like, you know, it's sounding kind of harsh. I think that might be in that 3 or 4K range. Like, can you remove a little bit of that? Or it's pretty boomy, can you, or it's pretty muddy. Can you take out some of the low mids? Um, you know, take out the stuff that hurts before you add, uh, before you compensate by adding. <laughs>